Since the beginning of human civilization, people wanted to travel faster and faster, first on foot, then on horseback. However, in the 19th century, steam engine and locomotive were invented. Thanks to that, people traveled around England with speed of 50 km per hour. Thanks to electricity, till the end of century they reached 200 km. People and goods could travel 33 times faster than before. Rail has changed transportation. It was easier to transport large and heavy goods like coal or thousands of workers to factories. Thanks to that, the rail started the first industrial revolution. Mines, steel mills, shipyards and trains become the bloodstream of the economy. Steelmakers become millionaires, tourism for the rich was born and communities started to integrate. People could visit the entire continents thanks to the Trans-Siberian Railway and the Orient Express. Today, Europe has to fight for innovations, development and pandemic recovery. The answer may be a network for ultra-rapid trains that will connect all European countries. It's an investment for decades so they can use even the magnetic levitation technology, such as traveling 1200 km per hour Hyperloop. My name is Michal and today in Slavic Coin let's think how to build Hyperloop in Europe. It all started in England, when James Watt invented the steam engine. The entire 19th century was spent on strapping Europe with railroads, which replaced horses. By 1900 they were already 23,000 kilometers of lines and 42,000 locomotives, most in Germany and England, which had more than half of all European lines. After Second World War, Europe started the construction of a real high-speed railway, which would run over 250 km per hour. In the 70s, Western Europe was supposed to be connected with ecological and fast transport. It was to help run a business, develop and strengthen European integration. Currently, the longest high-speed rail network has Spain, France, Germany and Italy. The largest country without such a network in Europe is Poland. Currently in Europe there's 9000 km of lines and another 1,700 km are under construction. The construction of one km of high-speed line is about 16 years and 25 million euros. The cost increased enormously when you're going above 300 km per hour. However, in mountainous and densely populated countries, their optimum is about 200-250 km per hour, due to frequently breaking of a train. Every minute safe on the Stuttgart-Munich road is 370 million euros that economy has gained. After 2020, in Europe there are several problems with debt, migration and slow development. A strong economy must have fast transportation. The railway is suitable for distance up to 1000 km. Meanwhile, in Europe there are only few connections and low speed on the most important routes. The second big problem is lack of a single rail gauge, communication system and even voltage. In 2021, the new era for Europe begins. European Union is just starting the new financial perspective. Also, we have recovery fund and a lot of ideas how to spend billions of euros to make Europe richer. Think Tank, Vienna Institute for International Economic Studies, suggested building a pan-European network for ultra-rapid trains. The entire network is to consist four main lines. Lisbon-Helsinki, with a loop around the Baltic Sea. Berlin-Athens, through the Alps and the Balkans, possible connections with Cyprus by ferry. Brussels-Valletta, via Benelux and Italy. Dublin-Paris. Berlin, Paris and Brussels will become transfer junctions and the most important cities in Europe. All the important cities in the continent would be connected, not only the European Union ones. The entire project is to be 18,000 km long, with two tracks and a speed of 300 km per hour. Germany would have the longest part, then Italy and France, the shortest part in Malta. The cost of URT would be 1.1 trillion euro, 7.5% of the whole European Union GDP. Half of that would be financed from the European level and another half from the national funds. Depending on the condition of existing infrastructure, terrain, and length of lines, some EU members would have to pay a lot more than others. 
For example, Poland's contribution would be 8% of its GDP, but for Belgium it would be 60%, for Estonia 62 and Cyprus 45. Shortly speaking, some countries need help. Thanks to URT from Berlin to Paris we will go in 4 hours. So why the railway? First, to cut CO2 emissions by 60% to 2030 and achieve full neutrality by 2050. The EU wants to invest in green energy, electric cars and rail transport. Transport is responsible for 19% of CO2 emissions. A train emits 3 times less CO2 than an airplane and is 50% more effective than flying. So the same amount of energy allows you to travel a greater distance. Another important factor is business. Europe has strong companies building cars, trains and planes. In aviation, Europe has the biggest manufacturer in the world, Airbus, which sells way more than Boeing or Embraer. The company has introduced the world's largest passenger plane, Airbus A380. However, the giant is not profitable because he consumes a lot of gas and it's hard to get full occupancy. It's better to have smaller machines and more adapted to the needs, like train. In trains, Europe is also very strong. Out of 10 biggest manufacturers, three are from Europe. Stadler in Switzerland, Alstom in France, and Siemens in Germany, which is the third in the list. The big problem about constructing the URT in Europe are costs. Secondly is the coordination of the whole European family on one multi-trillion euro project that will start making profits in decades. However, big infrastructure projects show many times in the history that they accelerate the development. Interstate highways in the US 95,000 kilometers of roads that were built for 425 billion dollars. They united the country, created suburbs, gave development to fast food joints and shopping malls and convinced people to use cars. They even increased safety because soldiers and tanks can drive on the roads and bridges. They also increased productivity and added 14 billion dollars every year for the economy. Japanese bullet train Shinkansen. Japanese miracle was based on traveling 320 km per hour trains with a characteristic nose. The lines have been built since the 60s and there's currently 3000 km of them. The country has now its own companies and technology, China. The first line was opened in 2007 and now it's over 35,000 km long network. It drives 2.3 billion people every year. Both Chinese and Japanese trains could go even faster, but because of the noise and safety regulations, they are limited to about 300 km per hour. Europe is therefore in a difficult position. How to convince a wealthy society where people have everything they wanted to work harder? The answer could be the forgotten stage of railway development. Maglev. It's a train that has no wheels and levitates on a magnetic cushion a few centimeters above the tracks. Thanks to that, it was supposed to compete with passenger planes. The fastest Maglev can go 600 km per hour. The technology turned out to be very expensive and therefore unprofitable. The only line is 30 km in China. The occupancy rate is only 20%. However, one of the richest men in the world, Elon Musk, has an idea how the train can overtake again plane. It would be land transport, faster than a plane and cheap like a car. Let's meet the Hyperloop. It's a capsule that moves 1200 km per hour, takes up 28 people and it's in a tunnel with reduced pressure. It uses maglev technology also. Sound speed travel, collision free and twice as fast as an airplane. There are plans for Hyperloop roads in Dubai, Russia, Finland, Los Angeles and Switzerland. The Emirates project will connect Dubai and Abu Dhabi. It would take only 10 minutes to travel 150 kilometers. The whole thing costs 6 billion dollars. According to plans, Hyperloop can be used on the Mars because of the thinner atmosphere there, so no tunnels would be needed. The most important advantage of the project are cheap vehicles. There would be 70% cheaper than the regular train. The second thing are cheaper tickets. Musk estimates the price between San Francisco and LA for $20. The disadvantages of the project may include inconvenience, lack of windows, no toilets, no food, and the possible and potential risk of failure in a tunnel with a vacuum going with a speed of 1200 km per hour. The biggest problem is the low bandwidth. In one hour, 36,000 people will go with a metro. 
12,000 people will use the train, and Hyperloop will take only 3,300. What if URT were built as in Hyperloop? The project would be supported by EU, business and people. The price of the tickets would be similar to the current ones, due to high prices of the land in Europe, so between 40 and 60 euro. The greatest success, however, would be the time travel between capitals in Europe. Berlin Paris, 1000 km, 50 minutes. Madrid Paris, 1200 km, 1 hour. Stockholm Rome, 2500 km, 2 hours. Warsaw Athens, 2300 km, 1 hour and 55 minutes. Budapest Helsinki, 1900 km in 1 hour and 30 minutes. The whole price tag will be 720 billion euros for 18,000 km. Cheaper on paper than the regular trains. But costs of R&D, marketing and all the approvals would increase the overall cost. However, the longest possible road, Lisbon Helsinki, which is 4,400 km long, would take for a normal train 17 and a half hour. For Hyperloop, only 3 and a half. Then all the Europeans would decide to go by train, not by plane. My name is Michal. Thank you for watching. Leave thumbs up, subscribe our channel, and let us know in the comment whether you're in the team of planes or team Hyperloop. Nie jest taki dyn, wiesz, dyn, dyn.